Uh, there's three types of discontinuities we're looking at in this section. I'll talk about a fourth that we usually see in calculus in just a second, but I'll go over that quickly. A gem discontinuity is usually when you have a piecewise function, and maybe the piecewise function changes that like x equals negative 2, and it jumps to a completely different behavior. So that's a gem discontinuity. If you have to, if you trace it from left to right with your finger, if you have to lift your finger and put it down in another spot and then start tracing again. A removal discontinuity would be if the function seems to be continuous everywhere, meaning you can trace it with your finger without any problems, except for one spot. So if I was to have a circle here, meaning that at x equals 2, there's no y value, then that's a removable discontinuity. And sometimes there's a, there's a, there is a filled in value up here. Um, that could be like y equals 5. At x equals 2, y equals 5. Otherwise, it follows whatever behavior this function is. <clears throat> so that's a removable discontinuity. Infinite discontinuity you've seen before in pre-calculus uh, would be if you have some sort of asymptote going on. So this is an infinite discontinuity because we never reach this vertical asymptote, this poorly drawn vertical asymptote. <clears throat> uh, one more. We also have... Um, an oscillating discontinuity with trig functions. An oscillating discontinuity would be, um, let's see, I'm not picking up a particular function. I can just draw that graph real quick. This would be like something you'd see in Desmos or an online graphing calculator if it was an oscillating discontinuity. As you get closer and closer to x equals zero, if you were to zoom in that graph, you would see it just gets more chaotic. It goes up and down between usually like, uh, typically with, with these examples, it's between a y is negative 1 and y is positive 1. And if you keep zooming, the fluctuation just continues and never reaches a particular value. So that would be an oscillating discontinuity. Um, so let's see. I'll try to do a couple Newton problems here. Uh, we have a graph of f of x. We're supposed to, let's see, uh, label the types of discontinuities. I see a removable discontinuity at x equals negative 6. So that's true. Is it multiple select? No. Uh, let's see what else. There's an infinite discontinuity at x equals 3. Uh, but I don't see that as an option here. Infinite discontinuity at x equals negative 6. If you go to negative 6, there is no infinite discontinuity there. That's a removable discontinuity. There's an infinite discontinuity at x equals 3. A jump discontinuity x equals negative six. Now it does like one could say you jump from this circle point down here, I guess. But remember what we just saw in the other graphs. A jump discontinuity is when you change to a completely different type of, of function. It, it continues on. It's continuous everywhere except at that jump. Uh, infinite discontinuity. No, continuous at x equals. It would be continuous at x equals negative six if you didn't have to lift your finger as you trace the graph. So it's not continuous because. So for this graph, uh, they're talking about x equals 3. So if you go to x equals 3, it's a jump discontinuity. If you follow it with your finger, you have to lift your finger, and it jumps to a completely different type of behavior. So it's a jump discontinuity at x equals 3. Let's see if it give us one different one. I mean, it has an infinite discontinuity at x equals negative 3. That's the last one I wanted to talk about. Okay.